Hi, Mr. Richards here. Let's take a look at our practice problems for Unit 3, Lesson 13, Benchmark Percentages. So if we look at question 1, how can you find 50% of a number quickly in your head? Well, I can think of two options. The first one is you could multiply by 1 half. And the second option is that you could divide by Two. And let's take a look at B. Andre lives 1 and 6 tenths kilometers from school. What is 50% of 1 and 6 tenths? Well, if we were to take that 1 and 6 tenths and divide it by 2, we would get 8 tenths of a kilometer. Now in C, we're given a fraction for Diego. He lives half a mile from school. What is 50% of half a mile? Well, let's multiply this by 1 half, and I think that's the quickest and easiest way to get there, to get to 1 fourth of a mile. So with our benchmark percentage of 50%, you could either multiply by 1 half or divide by 2. Moving on to question 2, there's a 10% off sale on laptop computers. If someone saves $35 on a laptop, what was its original cost? If you get stuck, consider using the table. If we're using the table, we can ask ourselves, well, how do I get from 10% to 100%? Well, quite simply, multiply by 10. Well, if I multiply by 10 there, could I not just multiply by 10 here? And 35 multiplied by 10 is $350. And sure enough, $350 is our solution for number 2. 35 is 10% of $350. Let's look at question 3 now. Explain how to calculate these mentally. 15 is what percentage of 30? Now, if you were to look at this using our good old tape diagrams, you can say, okay, if my whole thing is 30, 15 looks like it's half of 30, right? 15 here is just half of the 30. And so with that being half of 30, one half as a percentage is that benchmark percent, remember, of 50%. Three is what percentage of 12? Now if I were to look at my 12, And say, how do I break 3 down if I just start counting 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 6, 9, 12? It takes me four threes to get to 12. And so for this question, 3 here is what percent of 12? As a fraction, it's, whoops, wrong color. As a fraction, it's 1 fourth, which is, as a benchmark, 25%. Now, 6 is what percentage of 10? It's a little trickier. If I were to look at this as 6 over 10, I could ask myself, well, how do I get that to being over 100? And I would multiply by 10 and multiply by 10. And this is just one method to get to 60 over 100, which is 60%. So whether you can visually look at the tape diagrams to calculate mentally, or just say, okay, well, 10 times 10 is 100 for this last question here. And then if I multiply by 10, then I must multiply 6 by 10 to get 60. That works as well. So as we look at our next question, Noah says that to find 20% of a number, he divides the number by 5. For example, 20% of 60 is 12, because 60 divided by 5 equals 12. Does Noah's method always work? Explain why or why not. Well, if we look at 20% as a fraction, that's 20 over 100. Well, if I simplify that down, divide by 10 
that's two tenths, divide by two, that's one fifth. And so if I multiply by one fifth, that could work. And he's saying, well, I need to divide by five. Well, multiplying by one fifth is the same as dividing by five. So I'm going to say, sure, that's perfect, wonderful, great. And now let's go to Diego. Sorry. Diego has 75% of $10. Noah has 25% of $30. Diego thinks he has more money than Noah, but Noah thinks they have equal amount of money. Who is right? Explain your reasoning. Well, let's just kind of figure this out, right? Diego has 75% of $10. And one thing we could do is to break this down into a tape diagram. And 75% as a fraction is 3 fourths. And so if we take our $10 and break it into four equal pieces, that's going to be 250 here, 250 there, 250 in that box, and 250 here. 75% is 3 out of those 4. So I could take 250 and multiply by 3, or 250 plus 250 plus 250, which is $7.50. So no, or Diego has $7.50. Now, Noah has 25% of 30. And so if I draw another box here, and zoom into that one. This whole thing is $30. And the reason we did fourths again is 25 simplifies into, I'm sorry, 25% simplifies into one fourth. So if I take my 30 and break it into four equal chunks by dividing by four, that's $7.50 per chunk here. And we're looking for one of these four, because one fourth. So this 2 is $7.50. And so who is right? Well, Diego thinks he has more money. Noah thinks they have the same amount of money. So Noah in this question is correct. Lynn and Andre start walking toward each other at the same time from opposite ends of a 22-mile walking trail. Lynn walks at a speed of two and a half miles per hour. Andre walks at a speed of three miles per hour. Here's a table showing the distances traveled and how far apart Lynn and Andre were over time. Use the table to find how much time passes before they meet. If we zoom in on our table here, we're gonna count our hours up by one here. So zero, one, two, three, and four. We can look here, and Lynn's distance is going to increase by two and a half miles every hour. So if we just add two and a half to, well, two and a half, we get five miles. He's traveled then seven and a half miles if we add two and a half, and add two and a half again, and you get ten. For Andre, Andre's traveling three miles an hour. So after the first hour, he traveled three miles, then six miles, then nine miles, then 12 miles. Now to get the distance apart, they started at 22 miles apart. They traveled a total of five and a half miles here. And so when you take 22 and subtract five and a half, you get that 16 and a half. Now they're traveling a total of five and a half miles every single hour. And so if you take 16 and a half minus five and a half, you actually get 11. And 11 minus 5 and a half is 5 and a half. And then you get to 0. So how long did it take? Well, it says right there, but 4 hours. And that is it for this practice problem review.